there are good and bad questions. We have to point that out. So any question that results in a yes or no answer, do you have the directions? What is the time? That doesn't actually create a conversational thread that you can actually interact with the other person on. So if you find yourself breaking the ice, asking questions that result in yes or no responses and feeling frustrated, you need to be relying on open-ended questions, questions that require the other person sharing a bit of information and some context that we can work with. And what's wonderful about this, especially in a professional setting, is when you ask questions seeking advice, you actually appear smarter. It improves that first impression. And it makes the other person feel good that they get to share their advice with you. So in listening to this, this doesn't just work in social or romantic settings like we shared with that example, but this also works in a professional environment, even with coworkers that you may not have ever interacted with. If you go seeking advice through asking a question, you're going to leave a very favorable impression of yourself and allow the other person to feel good in that interaction. Now, you may have heard Dale Carnegie's famous sentence, to be interesting is to be interested. And a lot of our clients who join the program have heard this and they go, great, just ask questions. I love it, AJ and Johnny. I ask a ton of questions. <laughs> I ask and they end all up, the questions. <laughs> <laughs> and they end up jumping on the dreaded question train, right, Johnny? Yes. So uh, we just went over the, the getting the approach out of the way, and now we're moving into getting the conversation started. AJ had made a mention of making sure that you're asking questions that solicits an answer. And we need to make sure that we're going to contribute to this conversation. Because if we get stuck in the question train, and the question train is just question after question after question, and we get stuck in this pattern because asking the question is the easy thing to do. It puts the spotlight on the other person. So if you gave the appreciative statement or the compliment, as Michael said, they're now in the fixed action pattern, and they're going to give the response. Now, the follow-up here is very important because you might be compelled to start another question. And what you're going to put yourself in is in your own pattern of question after question after question. You can only ask so many questions in a row before the interaction caves in on itself. So you've gave an appreciative statement. You put the attention on them. They're now acknowledged. They've answered your question. And another question continues to hold the spotlight on that person and forces them again to answer. This is called the, the question train. We ask too many questions in a row. That attention gets overwhelming and the person begins to feel interrogated and they become self-conscious and slowly begin to shut down. This will cause, when they shut down, it'll cause you then to get self-conscious of why the interaction is petering out. And you'll either see that person leave and get angry at them, or the, the opposite will happen, which some of you know, was you'll take it personally and begin to beat yourself up due to that conversation falling apart. So this is why the statement after the question is so important. That's right, Johnny. And that's why it's so important as you complete the conversation formula, we're taking their answer and we're responding with a statement. That statement is us adding something to the conversation now. So you could imagine if all we're doing is following up every single question we ask with another follow-up question, well, at the end of that interaction, the other person doesn't really know anything about us 